Good afternoon and welcome back everyone to our second technical analysis options education webinar series. My name is Tony Zhang. I'm the chief strategist here at Options Play. And last week we covered friend following strategies using technical analysis. And this week we're going to continue that theme and talk about counter trend trading strategies, effectively trading against the trend. Why would you want to trade against the trend? And if what are the advantages of doing so? And how would you go about doing so? It is quite different from what we discussed last week. So let's jump right into it. Uh, one of the things that we are dedicated here every single Thursday is to make sure that you have the proper education to ensure uh, that you trade sustainably and confidently in your trading account. And that means having access to education that doesn't just span uh, options trading, but also technical analysis, trading psychology, portfolio management, the, a well-rounded education for you to sustainably grow your account in the long run. And this month, we are focusing more on the idea generation side of things, specifically around technical analysis and how you can utilize it to scan for opportunities and some of the best technical analysis scans that I use in my personal trading and my portfolio is what we're going to discuss here this month. Now, before we get started, what we are going to discuss here today is purely for education and demonstration purposes. It is not a solicitation or recommendation to buy or sell any of the specific securities that we'll be using as example purposes during today's session. So what we'll cover here today is starting off by giving you a little bit of color as to my trading background and how I've been using technical analysis in my trading over the past 18 years. Then what we'll do is we'll do a breakdown of trend following versus counter trend. Both of them are useful tools in your portfolio, but they're very different in nature. So we're going to dissect and understand what's different about each one and talk a little bit about what are some of the advantages to trading counter trend uh, as a overall strategy. Then we'll take a look at the strategy construction, uh, you know, how we think about counter trend strategies, what indicators and parameters we specifically use, uh, including fundamental factors for counter trend trading. And then I want to show you some of the features that are coming soon here to Options Play that will help you automate the things that you're going to learn here during today's session before we open this up for Q&A at the very end. Um, but the primary goal that I have here for today's session is to make sure to provide you with a proven strategy to identify new trends at its earliest possible moment. And we'll talk a little bit about kind of why this is such a strong advantage to counter trend. And if you've never traded counter trend before, why it's worth paying attention to. So we're going to break this down into foundational knowledge of how and why to trade against the trend and then how you can gain that directional edge, meaning what specific indicators, what specific parameters and thresholds that have been back tested to show strong performance for counter trend strategies. Um, now, I always get questions during these sessions as to whether or not these are recorded. And the answer to your question is yes, these are both recorded. And the slides will be available with that recording this weekend. We always post these videos on YouTube. Uh, you can get an email notification of when these recordings are available. If you have a free trial with us or if you are a member here at Options Play, you will get that email once we publish that onto YouTube. But we also will show you some of the features here within the platform. And in order to get access to those features, you need to have a membership or you can sign up for your free trial using this link on your screen. Uh, I'm sorry, the QR code on your screen or the link that Philip just left everyone uh, in the chat window. Uh, that will help Help you get started with uh, the platform that we will be using during today's session to scan for these opportunities. So let's jump right into it. Starting off with a little bit on my background. So I've been a market strategist for 18 years. I've worked with over that time thousands of retail and institutional investors, helping them understand the um, helping them understand the markets uh, with regards to option strategies, uh, understanding uh, market color, and how to navigate uh, this 
uh, how to navigate your portfolios, specifically a focus on uh, technical analysis as a discipline, options trading strategies as a discipline, but more importantly, portfolio management for profitability, uh, because that's why we're all here is because we want to trade profitably. What tools do you need in your portfolio in order to do so? That is what we're focused on here today, and that's what we're focused on here every single Thursday as part of our Options Play Education Series. Now, the reason that counter trend, whoops, the reason that counter trend strategies are an important tool is because it is one of the primary tools for active managers to outperform. The other, the, the strategy that we covered last week is trend following. Now, trend following is much more natural, but by definition, if you're following a trend, that means you're already late to the trend. Uh, and whenever you're late to a trend, it's very hard to outperform. Um, your uh, they tend to be shorter, shorter uh, trades, uh, meaning you're just trying to capture the trend. But what you're not going to do with trend following strategies is outperform. In order to outperform, you need to identify trends early before everyone else, and that's really what the nature of counter trend trading. Is it requires a combination of technical and fundamentals in order to master counter trend trading, which is a little different than trend following because trend following you largely only need technical analysis, or I would say you can get away with just looking at technical analysis and momentum to tr to follow a trend. But when you're trading counter trend, you do need to have some. Uh, overlay of fundamentals in order to be successful at counter trend trading. So what I'm going to show you today are scans that we've built and developed using the help of AI tools, uh, specifically uh, some of the back testing tools that are available to, to specifically uh, test different parameters, different uh, indicators in order to get to what I'm going to share with you today. Um, so like I said, uh, what we're going to do is kind of break down between trend following and counter trend. So naturally, trend following means you're going with the trend. Counter trend means you're going against the trend. Now, when you're trend following, these tend to be higher probability of success because you have an identified trend and you're basically going along with the trend. These generally have what we call moderate risk reward ratio. And the reason they're moderate is because in order to follow the trend, the trend has to first be established. Um, so by definition, you are to some way, shape, or form late to the game. Uh, and when you're late to the game, your risk to reward is never going to be uh, the most optimal. It's never going to be the best possible risk to reward ratio. You're going to have a more moderate risk to reward ratio. When you're going counter trend, this is really tend to have lower probability of success. You're going against the grain. You're kind of sticking your neck out, and sometimes you get uh, eaten alive uh, when you're going against the trend. However, when you do go against the trend, this is really when you have the most excellent risk-reward ratios possible on a trade. You're trying to get into a trend early or identify the trend when it starts, um, uh, potentially just as it starts, and that's really when your risk-reward is maximized when you're going counter-trend. And that's some of the benefits of going counter-trend. Now, when you're trading a trend following strategies, these are sometimes, you know, uh, technical, using only technical indicators, you can find these opportunities. And many times you can trade multiple trades back to back consecutive buy signals uh, on, the, on, on these types of strategies. But when you're going counter trend, uh, typically there are very few true signals. You tend to get a lot of false signals, and we'll talk a little bit about how to uh, filter out those false signals, and even fewer when you overlay the fundamentals to your counter-trend strategy. Uh, you're going to find that the vast majority of counter-trend signals, you actually, not, you actually don't actually act on. It's actually a very few percentage of the signals you actually act on, but those are the ones that are truly the ones that you can outperform uh, the markets using these types of true counter trend signals that we're going to show you here today. Um, but overall, trend following is very natural. You're going with the flow. Counter trend feels very unnatural to go with the trend. Uh, and sometimes it takes a bit of mindset shift 
in order to understand how to navigate kind of a counter trend strategy. So with that, let's just kind of break down, uh, you know, the counter trend strategy that we're going to go through during today. So first of all, what we need to do in order to trade counter trend is to identify a trend extreme. Uh, this is usually uh, using some type of momentum indicator, but what I'm going to show you here today is using the combination of two uh, momentum indicators, uh, two, uh, one shorter term, one longer term, in order to um, identify that trend extreme. And specifically what we're doing is we're trying to filter out as many false signals as possible because just because something is an extreme does not mean it is a valid counter trend trade. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna identify trend exhaustion. Uh, so just because something is extreme doesn't mean it's going to reverse. So you, what you want to do is you want to filter those extreme signals, overbought or oversold ex, uh, extreme signals with some level of exhaustion, showing you that buyers are exhausted or sellers are exhausted because that is when trends change. When there are no more buyers, that's when the price declines. When there are no more sellers, that's when price starts to rally. So you have to have a combination of finding an extreme with that exhaustion. And then lastly, what you need to do is you need to align it with fundamentals. Just because you found something that's extreme where buyers are exhausted, you know, does that make the case for a bearish trend? Not really. You need to also have some level of fundamentals attached to it, some type of uh, 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 dislocation between where the market is trading and where the stock should be from a fundamental perspective. So with each each layer, if you will, you know, you, you what you're doing here is you're first identifying opportunities. And then what you're trying to do is you're trying to filter out those opportunities uh, further and further. And what you're going to find is that, you know, as you identify trend, uh, trend extremes, you know, when you're using multiple indicators, you probably uh, can probably um, filter out about 10% of false signals by using multiple indicators. Uh, and then when you're looking at exhaustion, you probably filter out close to, I would say, 50% of additional um, uh, extreme uh, overbought or oversold filters when you look for exhaustion in addition to those price extremes. And then when you look at fundamentals, you probably uh, filter out another 30%. And what you're left with is, you know, in this particular case, only about 10% of the original signals that you get become valid counter trend signals. So it is a lot of work. Uh, you, it's a lot of research to find these ideas, but this is kind of where uh, the cream of the crop opportunities are to outperform the overall markets. Does that make sense, everyone? Please type one into the chat window if that makes sense to you. Perfect. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the counter trend advantage, right? And I want to make sure everyone understands this visually. A lot of people feel very uncomfortable trading against the trend. I tell pe people, tell me it's too risky. You're catching a falling in knife. There's a lot of different uh, ways people describe counter trend that say you should avoid it at all costs, that you should go with the trend. Uh, but let's let's go through kind of these two examples, right? I'm going to use this. Uh, this this trend here, for example, uh, you know, this rally here from roughly, uh, whoops, back. Uh, at this time, this the stock was trading around 290 and rallied up to about 390. Let's call it, you know, a hundred dollar move, right? And what we're trying to do is try to capture as much of that as possible. Now, if you're following the trend, what you need to do is you need to first establish that the stock is in a bullish trend before you enter. So if you look at kind of the fact that this stock declined from, let's say, 360 down to 290, at what point would you say, would you be comfortable enough to say we're back into a bullish trend? Uh, you know, you can use a moving average, right? This is a 50-day moving average. And the earliest possible moment, I would say that you'd be able to get into that trend is probably on this candle probably more on this candle. So that's probably around the three, let's call it the 308 mark, right? That means that your upside here has already been reduced by, in this particular case, about 20 bucks or so. It's a $100 move. By the, the earliest possible time you could detect this using a moving average is around 20 bucks into the move, which leaves you with about $80 of potential upside. 
And now, where do you actually cut your losses, right? If the stock declines back to 290, do you cut your losses? It'd have to go below 290 before you would say, you know what, this bullish trend, it didn't establish, I'm going to cut out and get out of my trend. So you're potentially making 80 and you're probably risking 25, 30 bucks here to the downside. That's a risk reward ratio, a little better than two to one risk reward ratio on a trend following strategy. Uh, realistically speaking, you probably would have waited probably for the stock to move back above this level to get in, uh, you know, potentially at the end of this particular candle, which at this point you're already at 325. So now 325 to 390, you know, you're looking at in this particular case now only about $65 worth of upside. And how much downside do you have in this particular case? Probably about 30 bucks or so. So now you're down to about a two to one risk reward ratio and a more conservative entry. So this is kind of trend following when you're waiting for the trend to be established before you get into the trade. And there's nothing wrong with that. You, have, you tend to have higher probability setup when you do that. But the risk to reward on those trades are simply not as effective and not as great versus if you were able to buy at this very low, as you can see, this is really where our indicator that I'm going to show you today generate the counter trend buy. And when it generates the counter trend sell, the opposite signal, what you want to try to do is get in at around 290 and get out at around 390. Uh, this is really where your risk reward in this particular case, let's say I got in at 290, where would I put in my stops? I'd put in my stops below 290. So, uh, you know, this is around 288. So if I got in right here and the stock declined, let's say, say to let's say 284, I'm risking five, six bucks uh, to the downside. And what is my potential upside? Uh, in this particular case, it was uh, maybe it wasn't a hundred bucks, uh, but it was certainly close to about ninety something dollars to the uh, to the upside. You know, this is really where your risk reward ratio is orders of magnitude higher when you're trading counter trend versus uh, trend following uh, or following the trend. Does that make sense, everyone? Please type two into the chat window if that makes sense to you. And then that simply begs the question, how do you actually enter this trade at this very bottom, you know, this counter trend signal that we found that that our uh, indicators generated here at the very bottom? And how do you also uh, generate the counter trend sell on the other end of this particular trade? So this is really where uh, I'm going to walk you through the overall strategy. First of all, what we're going to look at is uh, our custom indicator, which is a a fairly simple indicator to understand. Um, it's 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 just simply the average of two existing commonly used indicators. So what I have at the very bottom is just a standard 14 period RSI. This is the RSI that pretty much everyone can understand and probably uses uh, on their charts here today at the very bottom. What I have here above that is our custom indicator. This is simply an average of two different RSIs a 10 period RSI and a 50 period RSI. So I'm using a short period RSI and a long, long period RSI. And when you average these two RSIs out, as you can see, if you look at the top panel and the bottom panel, they look almost identical. There really isn't a huge difference between the two. Uh, as you can see, when 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 you know this RSI generates a buy signal, this one does as well. When this one generates a sell signal, this one does as well. Um, so. The two are very close to each other and very similar to each other. But what the custom indicator does is it does do a decent job at filtering out some false signals. So for example, here's a false signal. The RSI here generated a sell signal. In this one, it did not. And as you can see, it filtered out uh, a bad uh, a sell signal here when the stock continued to move higher. There was another one here at the very beginning where RSI generated a sell signal. This one did not. Uh, so as you can see, when this when R, the standard RSI generated a sell signal, the custom indicator does not generate the sell signal. And the goal here is to simply filter out some of the uh, false signals that RSI can potentially generate, especially when things start to trend. Okay, so what we're really doing is an is an indicator that's very similar to RSI. It's identifying price extremes, overbought, oversold. Those are your starting points to identify trend reversals. But what we're trying to do is we're trying to 
uh, filter out some of those false signals. And this becomes a little bit more obvious when things get trending, right? Because when you have a sideways market, like we saw here in this initial chart, as you can see, when the market is moving sideways, most of the time, the custom indicator generates the same buy signals and same sell signals as your standard RSI. Uh, there were a few false signals that it was able to uh, filter out based on the custom indicator, but really the power of this indicator comes when the um, when the market starts trending, right? This is really when your momentum oscillators do not work as when things start to trend. And as you can see, when RSI triggered multiple sell signals, when this thing started trending higher here, the custom indicator never generated a sell signal. So I've created these uh, little markers on the screen so that you can easily see when the custom indicator generates a buy or sell. And as you can see, it never generates a buy or sell here in these uh, in, in these. Uh, times when the standard RSI generates a sell signal. And the goal here is to try to, when things start to trend, to not generate the same number of false uh, buy or sell signals using the custom indicator. Now, with any indicator, no indicator is perfect. There will still be opportunities when the custom indicator will generate false buy or sell signals, especially when things are trending very strongly in one direction or another. Every momentum indicator will generate false buy or sell signals when things get really trending in one direction or another. But generally speaking, at that time, when the when the when one stock is basically going straight up to the right or straight uh, down to the uh, to the right, um, you know, generally speaking, that should be a pretty good indication that your your momentum indicators that are trading that are meant for sideways markets are not your best. Uh, tools for navigating those uh, markets, which is why the second part of my uh, trade is very important, which is identifying exhaustion. Just because you've identified a price extreme, even when you have a custom indicator like the one that I'm showing you here today, and I'll give you the code for how to generate that custom indicator on your own if you'd like after this uh, session, even when you have a custom indicator that helps you filter out some false signals, when things really get trending in one direction or another, even our uh, custom indicator will generate what we call false buy signals. You can see this generated four different uh, buy signals on this trend lower, right? So that that's really why divergence is such an important indicator uh, or exhaustion rather is such an important component to counter trend trading just because something is at a price extreme is not a good enough reason to believe that the trend is over and it's now going to reverse back into the other direction in a big move here to the other side what you need to see is that as we make a lower low in price momentum no longer makes a lower low and out of all of these four signals that never happens until the very last one whoops until the very last one. As you can see, on this move, we made a lower low, but as you can see, RSI also made a lower low. On this one, a lo new lower low. This one, a new lower low. And only on the last one do we make a higher low on RSI. And what that gives you a sense for is that sellers are starting to get exhausted. There's no, the momentum here to the downside is not as powerful and sellers are clearly losing uh, momentum on that selling. So there are fewer and fewer sellers gain, uh, stepping into the market. And when you have no more buyers left, that's how you get uh, a big move here to the uh, in the opposite direction. So is this a perfect indicator? No, no indicator is perfect. But what you're trying to do is find the best possible um, signals, right? And is it going to find, uh, you know, do you sometimes miss out on, on on, on sell signals, on buy signals, absolutely. So look at this, right? We we generated multiple buy signals here, but at no point did it generate any form of exhaustion. But what that means is that you likely would have missed out on this big move. But I think you know this is really where we have to go back to Warren Buffett's uh, famous quote. You know, in in baseball they call balls and strike uh, strikes and balls, but in the markets uh, they don't. Right? You can wait for the perfect pitch. And this is really you trying to wait for the perfect pitch. And when you wait for the perfect pitch, 
Sometimes you miss out on some opportunities. That's okay. What you're trying to look for are the best possible trading opportunities. And that means you have to find price extremes by filtering out some of those false signals. And then what you want to do is on the on the signals that you do get, uh, add one more layer of 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 um filtering using divergence because that's going to help you truly identify when buyers are exhausted or when sellers are exhausted. If that makes sense, please type three into the chat window if that makes sense to you. Perfect. Now, what I find is that even when you identify price extremes using a custom indicator that helps you uh, filter out some of the false signals, and then you, on top of that, layer the divergence part of it, where you only find the best possible extreme uh, indicate uh, signals using divergence or exhaustion. Even with that, in my opinion, it's not enough. This is really where I still have to turn to the fundamentals, because what you're effectively saying is that the market has gotten the price of a stock incorrect, and I think that there's a possibility for a quick and fast reversal in the opposite direction. Now, markets usually don't just get prices wrong for no reason. There's usually a, a reason behind it. And in order for, you know, when we say there are no more sellers uh, left and, the, and for buyers to step back in, in, in volume and in strength, there has to be a reason for that. And that's really where I have to turn to the fundamentals. And there are so many different ways that you can look at a company fundamentally. So which is why instead of telling you specifically what to look for, I'm going to help you understand kind of the, uh, the, the, the building blocks for how I look at a, at a, at a fundamental comp at a comp at a company fundamentally. And then you can look at different metrics to kind of gauge what works for you or what makes sense to you. Because what I'm looking for are undervalued companies on stocks that I'm bullish on and overvalued companies that I'm bearish on. Now, many of you have brokerage accounts that have rating systems, right? You can always use that as a first line of defense. So if you found some stocks that are uh, oversold, there's some negative divergence or positive divergence, and you think that there's an opportunity for that stock to rally significantly, plug that into your brokerage platform. Almost every brokerage platform has some kind of star rating system, whether that's Morningstar or S&P Global. Uh, and, and most of them have multiple research platforms that provide some type of fundamental research on a company and gives you a rating. Um, you can use that as a first line defense if you don't feel comfortable doing your own research and diving into the fundamentals. Use that as your first line defense, right? If something is is you think is potentially has an has an has a um, opportunity for, uh, as a bullish case, uh, maybe today you find three or four different stocks that you that meet all your all these different criteria. Pick the stock that has the best rating from a fundamental perspective, right? That's a good way to scan out of four or five different opportunities, which one you actually take from a fundamental. And then I encourage you to read those fundamental an analysis to better understand why that is an investable opportunity and see if it passes the litmus test for you, right? Does it make common sense to you what the analyst is saying? If it does, then perhaps you might want to dive a little deeper. But my fundamental uh, thesis is usually based on you know, the valuation of a company, right? And I'll talk a little bit about how I look at valuation, right? There's a few different value met valuation metrics that I look at. But what I'm really looking at is, does the valuation metric make sense in comparison to two metrics? Number one is expected future growth. It's naturally stocks that are meant, that are expected to grow very fast, trade at higher valuations. Stocks that trade at uh, that are expecting to grow very little or perhaps decline in terms of growth trade at low valuations. That's just basic common sense. And what you're going to find is that as you look at more and more companies, you look at the same metrics over and over again, you're going to start to get a sense for what makes sense for what valuation metric. So just for our just for reference, the S and P currently trades at 20 times forward earnings. All right, and the average S and P 500 stock is expecting to grow EPS by about five to six percent over the next year. So 5 to 6% growth equates to roughly 20 times next year's expected earnings. 
that's what the market is currently trading in. That's the average, right? So if you have a stock that's trading, that's expecting to grow at 15% uh, over the next year, when the average stock is expected to grow at 5 to 6%, then it should command a valuation higher than 20 times forward earnings, maybe 25 times, 26 times. And you know, as you look at the spectrum of stocks that grow at 10%, 15%, 20% in terms of expected growth, you start to get a feel for how far above 20 times forward earnings it should be trading at. And if let's say a stock is not expecting to grow over the next year, maybe it trades at 15 times forward earnings, 16 times forward earnings, some trade as low as 10 or 12 times forward earnings, you start to get a feel for what is the expected what is what is the market valuation for the expected future growth? And what you're looking for are stocks where those two things are disconnected. For example, Ferrari trades at 48 times forward earnings. It's expected to grow at a good clip, 15%, but 48 times forward earnings is 140 times higher than the average market valuation. Costco trades at 45 times forward earnings. The stock is only expecting to grow about 10%. The market's expecting to grow about 5 to 6%. Costco is growing at a healthy clip above that 10%, but it's trading at 45 times forward earnings. It's near more than double the average S&P 500 stock. That doesn't make sense to me, right? So these things will start to jump out at you as, as things that don't make a lot of sense given the growth rate expectations. The second thing you're looking at is margins. For every $1 they make in revenue, how much do they turn in terms of profit? High margin businesses command higher valuations. Low margin businesses command very low valuations. If you look at automobile stocks, resource stocks like mining stocks, uh, energy stocks, they trade at very low multiples because they have very low margins. For every $1 they can make, they, they, they generate very little in terms of profits. And also those, those are the types of businesses that are very difficult to scale, meaning the cost to, to, uh, to selling one, an additional barrel of oil is extremely high versus software companies are extremely scalable. You know, they build one piece of technology, whether they sell it to, you know, one client or a thousand clients, the cost of them is relatively similar, meaning that it's very scalable. They have very high margins. So you have to think about margins uh, meaning how much profits can they potentially make for every $1 in revenue, the higher the margins, the higher the valuation. And you start to get a feel for, you know, when stocks that have net margins that are 20%, 25%, those, those command a premium in terms of valuations. Stocks that have a 5 or 6% net margin, they're going to command a discount in terms of valuations. So, those are the two primary factors that I look at as a starting point to understand a business from a fundamental perspective. And those are the two, uh, two, two data points. Those are the only two data points that I typically look at to get a back of the envelope sense as to whether the current valuation that it's trading at makes sense or not. And a lot of times you're going to find some stuff that are dislocated from, uh, from, uh, from the valuations. For example, uh, PayPal trades at 12 times forward earnings. It's expected to grow EPS by about 10% over the next year. So it's healthy growth, uh, very strong margins, You know, roughly 20, 25% net margins, so healthy margins, yet it trades at a discount of nearly 40, 40% to the rest of the market. Uh, you know, that potentially is an opportunity. Uh, PayPal also recently, you know, sold off pretty heavily. And that's, that's, you know, kind of what you're looking for. Stocks that sold off very heavily, traded very low valuations, uh, but fundamentally look pretty sound, you know, high margins uh, and look like it's growing at a healthy clip. Uh, vice versa, stock like Costco is a good example, you know, no longer growing very fast, 10% EPS growth, but trades at 40 times for 45 times forward earnings. Margins, 5%. Uh, sorry, I think even lower than that, probably three to 4% in terms of margins. For every $1 they make, they only turn about three to four cents in terms of profits. Very low margin business. Uh, so when it's when a very low margin business is not expected to grow by some astronomical event and it trades at very rich valuations, something doesn't seem right. So those are some of the things that I look at um, with regards to um, the fundamentals. So that comes back to the question of how do you value a company? And generally speaking, you know, you kind of break down companies into two categories. You have well-established and profitable companies, and you have newer companies, not as profitable, kind of growing very fast, early stage companies. And you generally think about valuing these companies 
differently, right? One, because new fast growing companies may not turn a profit. They might, you know, they're growing very fast. They're not trying to, they're not focused on profitability. They're focused on growth. So trying to, trying to value them as a multiple of earnings is just not fair because they either don't have earnings or they're not prioritizing earnings. So what you generally try to do for fast growing companies is you look at multiple of sales. You look at how fast is sales growing and what multiple is it trading uh, relative to sales. For established companies that have strong earnings, think about Apple, Microsoft, you know, these types of companies that have strong earnings, uh, then you typically use a multiple of their earning power. So uh, that's kind of the, 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 the two different segments of how you look at value in a company, either a multiple of earnings or a multiple of revenue, um, depending on what type of company you're looking at in that example. Does that make sense, everyone? Please type four into the chat window if that makes sense to you. Perfect. So if you're able to combine all of those things together, that's how you find these opportunities. So what I'll do is I'll quickly just share my chart here, uh, my, my screen here. Um, actually, I have this up right here. Uh, and this is really what I'm showing you here before, right? So the, below what you have is your standard RSI. Above that, you have this custom indicator. Uh, and I will share the code with you for those of you that want to uh, use this custom indicator on TradingView. Um, and what I have here on my screen is whenever the custom indicator generates a buy or sell, it generates these little tags on the screen, right? So this is the S&P 500. And every single time the custom indicator generates a buy signal, you get these green bars that show up. And every time the, it generates a sell signal, you get these red bars that show up. Um, and you can see how they work. Um, you know, for the most part, uh, the, the, we didn't really generate any real buy signals until this one, because that was the first time where I would say uh, you start to get a little bit of divergence. And as you can see, it generated the buy signal. Let, let's just take a look. Let's, let's log. Let's dive in a little further. It, it generated that buy signal on that specific candle. Effectively, the first candle that that trend reversed is when this generated the buy signal. That's the power of counter trend trading, because if I'm able to enter this this move on, on that specific candle, where do I cut my losses? Whoops, sorry. Um, where do I cut my losses in this particular example? I would cut my losses probably somewhere right here, right? So meaning if it made a new lower low, I'd probably get out of my trade. So if you think about the upward potential versus how much that I have to risk, I'm risking a very small amount relative to the potential that I have here to the upside. And that is the power of these counter trend trades. Um, you, you, I'll, you know, we can look at a few different signals here as well, right? So here's Goldman Sachs. This was the, this was the one that I was showing you here before. Um, uh, as you can see, it generated multiple buy signals down here, but it really didn't show any negative divergence until right here, right? The, only the last one generated some, some negative divergence, and that generated the buy signal on this specific candle. It didn't end up being a big move here to the upside, but as you can see, what you do get is uh, an opportunity to get in at the earliest possible moment. Uh, you have this buy signal, which you know there were there was no negative divergence here on this move, so this would not be a valid buy signal. There was uh, there wasn't, in my opinion, a negative divergence on the next one as well. Only this last one was there. Well, there still wasn't negative divergence even on this last one. So you know I, I don't think I would have taken this specific signal because there was no divergence on that. Right. Uh, same thing here. These sell signals. These were not valid sell signals because you didn't get that negative divergence. That last one did generate a sell signal uh, because you have higher high in price, lower high in terms of, of negative in terms of negative divergence. So this would have been a valid uh, sell signal. I'm trying to figure out what the exact candle was. It was this specific candle that would have generated the sell signal. Um, as you can see, that didn't work out. Right. It didn't didn't decline significantly from here. Uh, but this is really where you are risking very little in order to make that trade. So once you enter that trade here, you'd probably place your stops above uh, the recent highs, which were uh, at the at the time that you entered the trade right here. So you would have probably gotten stopped out on this particular candle or one of these candles over here. And the risk that you would have taken would have been pretty low on that specific short uh, on this trade. 
Um, so that's really the goal here of these counter trend moves is to be able to enter uh, the potential of capturing these big trends while risking a really small amount of capital. Um, uh, I'll look at that Costco trade here again. Recently, it generated that counter trend sell, um, and it did so as you can see. This last, these last two counter trend sells were with some negative divergence, right? Higher high in price, lower high in terms of momentum, and you know this is a, in my opinion, this is a valid trade. You have a price extreme, you have uh, exhaustion signals, and you have a valuation that simply. Uh, does not align with what we're seeing from the fundamentals. So this is really something that you can test it out yourself. Like I said, I'll, I'll put a post a code in for the custom indicator. Um, let me see if I can actually, uh, let me see if I can post it into the chat window. Yeah, okay. Uh, looks like I'm able to post that code into the chat window. So you can actually take that code, uh, paste it into trading view and create this custom indicator right here that I have here on my screen. It averages both the 10 period and 50 period RSI. You can go into the code and change the different RSI periods if you'd like as well um, and try it out for yourself. Um, the goal here is to show you kind of how uh, these RSI signals rel or rather the custom RSI uh, compares to the standard RSI side by side, see how they do. Um, and mo more importantly, um, if you don't want to do all the work and, and build the custom indicator and do your own analysis, we have built this specific scan into options play. We've just finished doing that and we are going to be launching that in about two weeks time under the trade idea section. Last week, I showed you how you can find the trend following ideas in the options play platform. Uh, in about two weeks time, you'll be able to have all of these counter trend trades as a trade idea that you can simply uh, find on the options play platform. So if you are a member, you'll be able to get access to that in about two weeks time. Um, we are, we finished development. We're just currently in the testing phase before we roll it out. And if you uh, don't have an options play account, you can sign up for your free trial and get access to uh, these signals in about two weeks time by accessing the options play platform. You can sign up using the link here on your, the QR code on your screen or the link that Philip is uh, leaving in the chat window here uh, right now. That is what I wanted to share with you here today. Now, before I open this up for Q and A, um, just what you've learned today, trend versus counter trend, trend following versus counter trend, what are the advantages of counter trend, what are the differences, uh, one specific strategy that has been proven over and over again to be successful with counter trend trading, and how you can filter out false signals by using divergence and fundamentals to help you navigate kind of the, uh, the, the traditional overbought, oversold signals that basically generate a ton of false signals that uh, are not particularly useful if you just simply traded them on face value. So with that, let's open this up for Q&A. Uh, if you have any questions, there's a Q&A window at the bottom of your screen. Type your questions there and I'll try to answer as many questions as possible uh, before we have to sign off. Using a fundamental analysis, what are the top two to three ratios that we look for? Uh, I kind of covered that here already. Forward to uh, forward PE ratio is probably the most important one for me uh, or the most commonly used for well-established companies that are profitable. Uh, uh, Fast-growing companies or unprofitable companies yet. Now, th let's, let's kind of also just kind of clarify that. There's, there's new and fast growing companies and there are established companies that are no longer profitable, right? Um, established companies that are no longer profitable right off the bat, you know, those are ones that you want to avoid. Those are kind of your bearish opportunities. New, if something's not profitable because they're brand new and they're trying to grow fast, that's a different story than well-established companies that are no longer profitable because they just can't turn a profit. Those are two different things. Just want to make sure that, that we distinguish between those two. How do you average the two RSI? It's just a simple arithmetic average. You take one plus the other divided by two. That's it. Uh, it's actually something that most uh, platforms aren't able to do. 
um, which is why we had to build our own custom indicator for it. Uh, does it matter what time frame you work? Uh, no, it does not matter the custom indicator. So if you look at this, you can look at weekly charts. Um, you can look at daily charts. All of them are suitable. Um, uh, here, let's just walk you through some of these, right? You get a lot of counter trend cells, but as you can see, most of them have no, no negative divergence. So these are not valid cell signals. This, these are not valid ones. These are not valid ones. This one, however, if you look at this one, this is really where we do have negative divergence, right? And I would use, uh, this would be the, out of all of these cell signals, that would be the true counter trend cell. And as you can see, that generated a nice sell-off here as a result of it, because there were no more buyers, or the, rather the buyers were exhausted, and that's really when you get that big sell-off here. Um, uh, on, the, on the weekly chart, you haven't quite generated a new sell signal yet. Uh, you, have, you have not generated a valid sell signal because all of these have no have not been met with divergence here. Um, you can do it on any chart, any asset class, um, any... Uh, yeah, any chart, any asset class, uh, you can use these custom indicators for. Oh, great question. Are fundamentals needed for ETFs? Uh, so this is part of why when I was doing this part, um, align with fundamentals, I had highlighted this stocks only. These types of strategies, in my opinion, are most effective on stocks because you can't do fundamental analysis on an ETF. You can only do it on a stock. So for these for those reasons, I generally find that your best opportunities for counter trend trades are not going to be in ETFs. They're likely going to be in stocks. Um, why did you switch from RSI to CCI? I use CCI for trend following strategies, but for counter trend strategies, I prefer using RSI. RSI, uh, CCI will get overbought or oversold way too often. Uh, you get a lot more false signals with CCI when you're thinking about counter trend. RSI gives you by itself fewer false signals. Um, and then we build that custom indicator to even restrict the number of false signals even further. Do you create your watch list using technical analysis first or fundamental analysis first? Um, I prefer using technical analysis first uh, and then look at the fundamentals later. But honestly, doesn't matter. You can do it the other way around, right? So you, if you want to go into your brokerage platform and only scan for kind of five-star stocks from a fundamentals perspective, and then I'll do the technical scans on those list of stocks, you can do that. You get the same result, uh, in my opinion. Uh, when you talk about futures earnings, what is the time span? We're usually talking about one fiscal year. So four quarters uh, of future earnings is usually what we're thinking about. We're looking at EPS growth over one year. Year over year EPS growth is kind of what we typically look for. Do you use DCF when doing PE? No. PE is just the price divided by expected future earnings. You don't need to, a DCF to do that. Um, you can use DCF. I have not found DCF to be a very a very strong model uh, for fundamental analysis. I don't know if anyone has a different um, thoughts on that. Does your code work on Thinkorswim? No, it does not, but I could possibly um, generate it for... I'll see if I can get you a, uh, a code for Thinkorswim for those of you that want to use this uh, custom indicator on Thinkorswim. Uh, the code is in the chat window. Um, it's available to everyone in the chat window. Oh, you can't copy it from the chat window? Hmm. Okay. Uh, we'll just have to email it out to everyone if you can't copy it from the chat window. You should be able to. There's a little option right next to the window and it says copy. Um, at least let me know if you can't copy it.
It was difficult to see the difference between the fault signals and bias signals. Okay, so let's we'll, we'll, we'll look at this one more time. All right, so um, I, I think this is probably the most obvious one, right? So when things are moving sideways, RSI is a pretty good at identifying overbought or oversold signals. Um, but when things start to trend, especially when the trend is not very clear, right? So especially here, right? When the start, when it's not very clear that we're in an upwards trend just yet because we're still within kind of you know, this trading range, right? But yet RSI, the traditional RSI generated a sell signal uh, here, it generated a sell signal here and a sell signal here. Um, and, you know, this is the first time where things have kind of broken out of a range where you can potentially say, okay, this might be the start of a bullish trend. I wouldn't take sell signals on RSI. But the previous two are very much still within the range and would have been what you would traditionally using an RSI would have generated a sell signal. So our custom indicators, you can see, did not break, you know, was still in the in the 60s range, did not generate that sell signal. Even that last one, it was just, it was barely under 70, but it did not generate that sell signal. So, you know, that's really what the custom indicator is designed to do is when things are starting to trend higher, but not quite moving higher, meaning it's, it's difficult to, to uh, from a price action perspective, perspective say, hey, things are starting to trend, I shouldn't take these signals, it filters out those false signals. And that's really kind of the, the key of these uh, custom indicators is try to avoid some of these false signals that happen when you're in the early stages of a, of, of a, of a massive trend, uh, of a bullish trend. You know, when you have like a, um, uh, a strong trend like we've seen in NVIDIA, let's go back to a daily chart here of NVIDIA. There's really no indicator that would that would not provide false signals, right? So you know, as you get multiple false signals here on Nvidia when things really start to trend. Uh, but however, as you can see, uh, only this last sell signal uh, was with negative divergence, right? So out of all of these signals, these sell signals that that you know traditional RSI would have given you, our RSI gave you, only one of them was a valid sell signal. And it happened to be the one that was near the very top because that is the one where you get negative divergence, right? That's why the divergence part is so important to me, right? Um, you, I, I keep going back to that Warren Buffett uh, quote, you know, in, in when you're trading, you don't call strikes and balls. You can wait for the perfect pitch. And that is the perfect pitch. You know, when you wait for the perfect pitch, sometimes you miss out on, on good, good balls, but that's okay. We're waiting for that perfect pitch. Now, uh, you know, is shorting NVIDIA the best, uh, best trade to make? Probably not. But if you want to find from a trading, from a timing perspective, you know, when you can try to call it when things are truly exhausted and have that opportunity to make that big move, but this is really where the combination of RSI uh, and um, divergence can do a really good job at that. Even if you don't have the custom indicator, even if you just use regular RSI, you still would have, uh, you know, in, in theory, not traded any of these sell signals until this very last one um, because of the divergence. That's why divergence is such an important component to counter trend trading. Without it, you would trade a lot of false signals. Would you recommend debit spreads for these types of trades? Yes, because in these types of trades, you're expecting a move to materialize fairly quickly. You're expecting that it, it to actually be a strong move. Debit spreads are definitely the better strategy to use. What are the scans that will be available on options play? This very specific scan, this custom indicator, and when it generates that sell signal is when you are going to, is what you're going to see in options play in a couple of weeks. Um, I will make sure that we get both the think script and the trading view uh, indicators out to you guys uh, after this session. Um, with that, that covers what I have time for here today. I hope that this was helpful in giving you a deep dive into counter trend trading, why you should do it, how you can go about doing it, and what you can do to be more effective at it. With that, thank you so much. I hope you guys have a great trading day. 
I will continue to bring you counter trend ideas on our Monday morning macro outlook session. So for those of you that are uh, members, thank you so much for supporting us and allowing us to continue to do this. We will pay you back by providing you these types of opportunities with the technical and fundamental scans already done for you every single Monday during our Monday morning macro outlook sessions. And I am also looking to expand them out to the rest of the week here as well, especially as we build these scans directly into the options play platform. Platform. So please let us know what you think, give us your feedback, and we will continue to make sure that we improve our services for those of you that are members. And if you don't have a membership, please sign up for your free trial using the link here on your screen or uh, that QR code uh, to sign up for your free trial that will give you access to the recording, the slides, and the platform that will do all of the scanning, including the research that we put out every single week to help you identify these opportunities. With that, thank you so much and have a great trading day.